Hello everyone, welcome again. Well, in this video, we are going to discuss about designing part of page object model. So this is the architecture which we are going to follow. We will create a base class that is page base class, which will contain constructor for initializing the web element and also the method for the common action and navigation. So the reason why I use the init element method inside the constructor is because constructor is a method which will invoke as soon as the object is created. So as soon as I create the object of this class, it is going to invoke the constructor which will invoke the init element method and which will initialize our web element. So in our base class, we will have the constructor for doing the same. Now when I say common action and navigation, so here as you can see, we have home new browse at the home page. And the same navigation link are present at the login page also. So this will be present inside the base class because these actions are not page specific. So I will have a base class which will contain all the common action. And when I log in, so inside the enter bug page also these links are present. Plus the logout is an action which will be oblique, which will be available for all the pages. So again, this action will go inside the base class. So inside the base class, I'm going to put all the common action and navigation. Now all the page specific classes such as home page, login page, bug detail page, they are going to inherit from page base class. And the reason why I'm inheriting from the base class is because this specific class will have their specific web element, action and navigation, plus they will have the common action and navigation, which will come from the base class. So that is the reason I will inherit all the page specific class from the base class. So here inside the base class directory, I will add a class called page base. I'm going to make this class as public. First of all, I will create the iWeb driver variable driver and the constructor for initializing the web element. And this constructor will take the argument as iWeb driver. So inside this, I will call the method page factory dot init elements the argument is driver and this. So as I told you earlier, this is a keyword which will point to the current class. Okay. Plus I will define a method. So protected void logout. And the reason why I'm making it as protected so that it can be accessed only by inheritance. So here I will call if generic helper dot is element present by dot x path so this is the x path for logout button And here I will call button helper dot click button and the argument is this. So it will click on the logout button. So this is a common action and I will add one common navigation. So protected void navigate to home page so 
so first of all let me define a web element for home link so private i web element home link the attribute is find by how equal to how dot link text comma using the link text and here I will simply call home link dot click so which will take me to the home page Now I'm going to modify the page specific class. So first of all, the login page will inherit from the page base. And I'm going to modify the constructor. Because as the super class have the parameterized constructor, so it is the job of base child class to provide that argument. So here I will create a constructor public login page i web driver underscore driver and in order to call the super class constructor i will use the base keyword and supply the argument and also i will create one private variable I web driver driver so if I want to use the driver object inside the current class I can use this one so this dot driver equal to underscore driver okay so here I'm initializing the driver of the current class with the argument supplied and as I told you this is a keyword which will point to the current class that means it will point to its variable and method also So after login page, home page. So here private i web driver driver. It is going to extend from page base. And I'm going to modify the constructor. So public home page i web driver underscore driver call the base keyword to supply the argument to the super class constructor and this dot driver equal to underscore driver so as we know that this particular page is going to return me the login page object when click on login file a bug link so this is the variable I need to supply here and after the enter bug page so page base private iWeb element sorry iWeb driver driver public enter bug i web driver underscore driver base underscore driver and this dot driver equal to underscore driver after that debug details so private I web driver driver extend from page base so public bug details I web driver underscore driver base underscore driver and this dot driver equal to underscore driver so 
so here I need to supply the driver okay so this is done now here I need to supply the driver so as you can see here the logout method and navigate to home so this is coming from your super class that is the page base okay so that is the reason I made those method and those method as a protected so now I need to do little modification inside my test script so now here I just need to supply the object of driver so object repository dot driver that's all I'm going to build the solution and again run this script in debug mode so in this manner using this architecture the advantage you have is that you can group the common method and action inside the page base and all other classes is going to inherit from that so the individual class that is the page classes will have the method element specific to that page and also you don't need to call the init element method every time So it has hit the breakpoint. If I do a step over, first it will create the object of home page. And then after that it will click on file a bug link. If I go inside this method and I just put a breakpoint to the super class constructor. And if I do a step over, so it is going to supply the username password, click on login button. So as you can see here, it has hit the super class constructor where it is going to initialize the element. So every page, this is going to execute. So we don't need to duplicate this code in every page. after that it will click on test ng which will take you to the detail page and after that it is going to select the value from the drop down that is trivial so in this manner you can use this architecture for create the page object model now here I am going to discuss about one more attribute that is cache lookup so along with the find by attribute you can use cache lookup attribute also so for example for the login button I will use the attribute cache lookup so when you specify this attribute along with the web element so first the web driver look for the browser cache memory for this element 
if it is able to locate it it is going to pick up the element from there so it will be much more faster so usually I will use this attribute along with the buttons or links I don't use this attribute along with the text box because the state of text box will change that means the state can be empty or with certain text so at that time it is possible that your script will fail saying this that the state got changed so usually I will use this attribute along with the button and link so you can put this look attribute that is cache lookup with the web element so for this one also and I'm going to run this script again in the debug mode So the advantage of using cache lookup attribute is that it will be little bit faster as compared to the normal script because it is going to fetch or pick up the web element from the browser cache. So if I do a step over it is going to create the object of home page click on file a bug link provide the username password and click on login button which will take me to the enter bug page and here I will click on test ng link then select from the drop down and click on logout button so this is the advantage of page object model that you can group your web element methods and navigation in a single class and you can design your test script the way you navigate on the web pages So that's all for this video and thanks for watching.